firmware confidentiality. One of the basic security concerns is to protect the firmware content from reading, to avoid stealing the firmware, copying the product, etc. STM32 provides two levels of protections for this purpose. First level is RDP, readout protection. RDP level 1 is mostly used. Second level is PCROP, proprietary code readout protection. Of course, here we are mainly talking about external attacks. In case there is further concern about internal attack, meaning reading the former content from the code, then isolation mechanisms could be used, such as MPU, firewall, trazone, and so on. Protections through RDP. This mechanism is very simple to set up. Once firmware is loaded in Flash, this protection could be activated either from programmer or from embedded firmware itself. There are two protection levels. Both levels will prevent the reading of internal Flash from outside the chipset. RDP level 1 allows regression to a clean device. RDP level 2 no more possible regression. There are some pros and cons of uh, RDP level 1. This level is very easy to test because you have the chance to go back to a virgin chipset. And the regression from level 1 to level 0 involves an automatic flash erase. That means even though you can go back to level 0, but the confidentiality of the former is not compromised because everything is erased in this regression procedure. This feature can be used for basic former update through either JTAG, SWD, or system bootloader. So the update procedure starts from a running device in RDP level 1, and then you need to connect to the board and perform RDP level 1 to RDP level 0 regression and then you can download a new version of the firmware. But this update mechanism is not fully secured because the firmware is downloaded in clear. Only way to keep security is to perform these updates in a secure place. RDP level 2 has also some pros and cons. In this level, there is no more JTAG or system bootloader connection possible. Update is still possible, but has to be managed by the firmware itself. You cannot download another new version through the debug port. But that also means the level of security is higher comparing to RDP level 1. And in this level, there is no regression allowed. You cannot go back to level 1 or level 0 from level 2. And to set up level 2, it is as simple as setting up RDP level 1. With RDP level 1, JTAG and bootloader can be connected. This increases the surface of attack, but relatively easy to do former maintenance. With RDP level 2, no access to the chips through debug port anymore. So attacks to retrieve the content of, of flash require very high expertise and very expensive equipment. Maintenance, I mean update of the firmware, requires more code to be developed. Of course, STM32 is not part of the secure chip family. This is just general purpose MCU, so the level of protection cannot be compared to a secure element, for instance. In addition to RDP, Firmware could be protected further using PCROP. Security can be compared with the castle with the level of protections. The PCROP brings the second level of protection in case first level has not been forced. PCROP brings protection against flash reading and writing. Even at RDP level 0, code is still protected. The only possible action is to execute the code. PCROP is also set up through option byte and can be used to protect a region of the flash. When RDP level 1 or RDP level 2 is activated, PCROP protects against reading of the code instructions. 
only instruction fetch is possible when accessing the PCROP protected area. This is true not only through debug port, but also through the code. That means even the code itself cannot read the content of the code on the flash. Using PCROP also brings some constraints on the code development. The code should be compiled with specific compile option to remove any data access from the generated assembly code. This is going to be a compiler configuration. You can find some additional compile options in IDE. And the code generated is a little bit bigger than without this option. Apart from that, the code to be protected should also be isolated from the rest of the code, meaning you need to put the code to be protected in a standalone flash page or flash sector. That is because the PCROP protection is in the granularity of a flash page or flash sector. So this needs to be managed in the linker configuration. And the PCROP region has to be activated only after firmware is programmed to the flash. For more details, you can find application note about PCROP in this link. If using RDP1 and the PCROP, doing a regression to RDP level 0, you can have the choices to keep the PCROP zones or to have the PCROP PCROP zones erased at the same time. That depends on the PCROP configuration in option bytes. This allows, for instance, to preserve the PCROP content and perform only the update of the rest parts. This mechanism could be used when you have some calibration data to keep, for example. And in that case, data have to be converted into some instructions. This is achievable thanks to some simple script. In combination with RDP2, PCROP areas becomes immutable. Up to now, on the topic of former confidentiality, we have addressed here only very basic former protection. But this level is enough in many cases and does not require significant investment. One main point not addressed here is the ability to update firmware while keeping the firmware protected at the same time. With these mechanisms, we can only ensure firmware is protected during execution on the field. If an update is needed, it has to be done in a secured way, by dedicated people, for instance. This diagram explains the firmware confidentiality life cycle. So the OEM developed their first version of the firmware. They deliver the firmware and transfer the virgin chipset to the EMS. Then this first version of firmware will be programmed to the board and then with RDP level 1 applied. Then the device with firmware version 1 plus RDP level 1 protection will be transferred to the end user. After some time, OEM developed version 2 of the firmware, maybe with some bug fixes or maybe with some new features added. Then firmware version 2 will be delivered to maintenance office. In order to update the version of the firmware on the board, the customer need to send back the device to the maintenance office and technician will first do an RDP level 1 to 0 regression and then program the new version of the firmware to the board and apply RDP level 1 again. Then this device with new firmware plus RDP level 1 still protected will be delivered back to the customer. Now it's time to have a hands-on for firmware confidentiality. The goal of this hands-on is to show the different steps to develop the code and create the firmware binary, program the binary, set the RDP level 1, use the working device, update the device using RDP regression, and use the new working device.